finally made it, y'all. It's 11.30 and I am so sleepy. But I was sleepier earlier. It's like all day long, every day. That's why it's been forever since I've been on here. My apologies to all my loyal listeners. Hey, to all of you, love you bunches. Hey, Sola. Hey, Miss Inez. Hey, Lurley. Hey, Shiggy Pat. Hey, I love you. Chapter 19 of Lies and Pumpkin Pies. The first entity to greet me when I open the door is Robin Piewacket Goodfellow. Greetings, wise and furry one. Once again, I will have to award you the title of most valuable player. On the investigative team, you were 100% right about the devious Rory Bombay pulling the strings of this entire scheme, and you correctly identified the use of chili bear ice in the murder plot. Rory used the ice to knock out Clang and then loaded him into the laundry car on top of all the towels and jerseys where he in injected the bubble of air and finally dumped the professor at the service entrance. Clang was a big boy and while Rory is crafty, he's not strong enough to carry a man that size all the way from the locker room. Meow. Soft but condescending. Yes, I've already acknowledged your massive intelligence. Now, where's our ghost? Before Pi has a chance to share his intel, Ghost Ma blinks into being. Her shimmering arms encircle me. You're alive! I knew you could get the best of that serpent. I return the hug and play the pity card. I'm sorry I caused you any worry, Grams. Can we postpone the debrief? I could use a hot shower. She pulls away and looks me up and down. Go ahead. Try not to think it. And like a hypnotist suggestion, my reunion plans with Eric flood into my mind. Graham's giggles. Oh my, let's keep it PG, Mazithra. A frustrated huff escapes as I stomp up the circular stairs. I'm taking a shower, then I'm hanging out with a friend in my apartment. I forbid all ghostly intrusions until noon tomorrow. It's none of her business, but I'm not planning on having Eric spend the night. I simply want to leave the window open to possibilities. She swirls around me, grinning ghoulishly, noon tomorrow, my, my. Don't count your chickens before they hatch, dear, she continues to snicker. Without acknowledging her taunt, I walk into the sacred closet and grab her vintage Oscar de la Renta silver sequin halter gown. Make sure this is running. Mitzi, what are you doing? She flickers with panic. I lay the treasure on the floor and raise my foot above its glimmering folds. Don't you? You wouldn't. Noon tomorrow. I flick one finger toward the exit. She whooshes out of the apartment, grumbling something about an unnecessary tantrum. Even a ghost has its vulnerabilities. I carefully pick up the gown and return it to the closet. There's no need for her to know that I would never follow through on my fashion threats. By the time the telltale bing bong bing of the alleyway bell sounds, I'm fresh as a daisy and fully dressed. In jeans and stuff, nothing daring in case you were wondering. As I approach the side door, I trip on absolutely nothing, and all my cool vibes vanish. In an instant, I take a moment and try to recover some semblance of allure as I push open the door. Good evening, Sheriff. Excuse me, I have a little something to whip my whistle. And this is not what it appears. I poured into this sun-kissed cherry lime. It 
Actually, it's good to cherry refresh me. And all the cherry drinks. Just add real cherry juice. Helps you, Arthur. Without acknowledging her taunt, I walk into the sector. Oh, I regret that. Let's see. Triple and absolutely none. How did we get back to that one? Good evening, Sheriff. He takes my hands, hand, bows deeply, and kisses the curve of my fingers. I come bearing tidings of gratitude for the dame Mitzi Moon. Pulling my hand back as though a bee is stung it, I giggle and blush. Who? Who are you, what, what are you talking about? He stands and avoids my gaze. It's freezing out here. How about you let me come in and I'll explain? I step back and wave him through. All right, fess up. His eyes sparkle with mischief and his gentle chuckle warms my heart. I had to look it up on the internet. Since you were my knight in shining armor this time, I wanted to present an appropriate speech. But I wasn't sure what they called lady knights. Apparently, they're called dames. Go figure. Thanks, but you were never a damsel in distress. He exhales and runs his fingers through his long, loose bangs. They fall enticingly over his eye. And I'm happy to see he's operating pomade-free this evening. If you say so, come on up. I have snacks. He gestures chivalrous, chivalrously uh, after you. When we enter the apartment, I catch sight of the murder wall and hurry to roll it away. He catches my elbow. No, no, leave it. I really want to see how the mind of Mitzi Moon works. I have no intention of telling him how little of my mind is on that board. I'll let him draw his own conclusions. He paces in front of the board and runs his finger along the green yarn connections. I'm a little surprised to see my name up here. I thought you were trying to prove my innocence. You were connected to the victim. You know that no one can be ruled out until they are. He turns and strides toward me. My tummy flip-flops when I catch sight of the look in his eye. You really did save my bacon. You hadn't brought in that second pathologist and discovered the true cause of death. The investigation would have stalled out. But the cause of death made you look even more guilty. I don't disagree. He turns and glances at the board, but somehow you followed that uh, you followed that trail of twists and lies to Rory Bombay. He pulls me close and leans down to whisper in my ear, what do I have to do to make you reveal your methods? And I'm dead. My heart has stopped beating. I can't breathe and my knees are jelly. What does he have to do? It's done. His interrogation techniques are irresistible. His strong arms embrace me and keep me from collapsing into a puddle on the floor. You okay, Moon? After pulling some air into my lungs, I recover my defensive wit. You're not going to break this witness, Harper. I can disengage myself and head for the sofa. Can I interest you in a sweet or savory nibble? A heart-melting grin sweds across spreads across his face and he joins me on the couch i got an unexpected invitation while i was in the slammer he holds up a finger to put my snarky comment on hold somehow me and my mom got invited to twiggy's thanksgiving potluck was that your doing i shrug maybe indirectly my dad asked me about your plans, and I haven't had any plans since my mom, you know, about my plans. Did I say my plans? Uh, he squeezes my hand and nods. I know. I ran the question past Twiggy, and the next thing you know, she's invited everyone to her place, which is great. It's not like I have a kitchen. 
Nervous laughter tightens my throat and he smells. Smiles. He don't be smelling. He smiles wickedly. He don't be smelling wickedly. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Can you cook? I pull my hand away and cross my arms. Depends what you mean by cook. Can I boil water? Yes. Can I heat absolutely anything in my microwave without alerting the, the fire department? Pretty much. Can I make duck a la orange served on a pillow of nutmeg air? Not on your life, he chuckles and grabs a handful of pretzels. Pie whack it. <clears throat> Saunters in and circles the settee expectantly. Hey, I understand. I owe you a big thanks for the tip about the chili bear ice, big guy. Eric grins and tips his head toward Pie in that way that insinuates he's doffing the cap. Pie stops, squats onto the Persian rug, and cleans his left paw. Oh, let's see. Would a box of furry puffs be an acceptable tribute? The caracal's tail flickers once, and he squeezes his eyes as he gazes at Eric. Real can confirm. I open my mouth to translate, but Eric beats me to the punch. Understood, buddy. I got you back. Mr. Cuddlekins turns his narrow gaze on me and tilts his head. I toss him a cheesy puff, and he catches it with one agile paw, clamps it in his fangs, and stalks off to the closet. The night slips away like sand through an hourglass as we discuss Thanksgiving memories, the importance of family, and canoodle on the couch. Canoodle. It's nearly 3 a.m. in the morning when the conversation vanishes and the canoodling takes center stage. By extra senses, my extra senses flash a warning light and we're clearly approaching the tipping point. I gently disengage. You gonna grab a drink of water? No. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. You need anything? The heat in his eyes is more answer than I can handle. As I rush into the powder room to splash some cold water on my face, Eric checks the time on his phone. Wow, I didn't realize it was so late. I should probably go. My heart is screaming, no, don't go, you can stay. But my new level-headed brain is saying, take it slow, you're worth the wait. I return and smile. Yeah, time got away from us. Breakfast at the diner? He shakes his head with regret. I wish. I'll be eating stale donuts at my desk. Paulson is a great deputy, but she really sucks at administration. I have... Hmm. I have a mountain of paperwork to catch up on before the holiday, plus I have to prep for the interrogations. He flashes me a half grin. Mom and I will definitely see you at Twiggy's, though. Sounds good? Sound good? Sounds terrible. Sounds like the abrupt ending to a perfect evening and an entire day moping around on my own. Boo, hiss. Of course I don't say any of that to him. Sounds good. I totally understand. I'll walk you out. When the bookcase door slides open, Pilehacket emerges from the closet and meows in a tone I don't recognize. It's almost like he's asking me what went wrong. Silly cat, don't judge me. I'll deal with you later. <clears throat> As we're circling down toward the stacks, a happy distraction pops into my head. By the way, I can't wait to observe the Frank Freeman interrogation tomorrow. He shakes his head in defeat. I'm not going to waste my breath. That's not not an official invite. Not that, that you've ever needed one. <clears throat> Before Eric braves the frosty air outside, he pulls me close and kisses me too well. 
Kiss, kisses me too well and for too long. These trembling legs are never going to make it back up the stairs. I'll text you tomorrow with the interrogation info. Sleep tight, Moon. He glides his hand along the side of my cheek as he exits. My skin is on fire. My heart is thumping like it ran a marathon. Let's see. That man will be the death of me, but oh, what a way to go. Eyes are getting crazy. I lock the deadbolt and set the alarm. Maybe if I'm especially good and the universe is feeling generous, I'll see <clears throat> Sheriff Too Hot to Handle in Dreamland. That's all of chapter 19. I'd read more, but I just can't, I can't. And I would say I'm going to get better, but I don't know. I'll try. I really need to pick back up and read every day or every night. Just worn out. Worn plum out. I love y'all. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. See you later. Hope to see you live at 5 on Friday.